in this lecture i will be presenting the basic concepts of uh, the networking that is uh, i want to brush up the basic concepts uh, the one who are, who don't have awareness on the computer networks uh, can also find something interesting in this lecture and which will be helpful for them to understand further topics uh, in future so the prime requirement uh, for any computer network subject is to know the popular iso osi model of the network protocol stack or tcp ip protocol stack we cannot say this or here and both the things will be there oso iso osi model of uh, protocol stack and uh, tcp ip protocol stack so what is this uh, iso osi model uh, actually in computer networks uh, uh, every communication involves many uh, service many uh, protocols and many services uh, many patterns and uh, ma many configurations but uh, if anything was gone wrong in the network communication uh, how we will identify this particular wrongness or this particular mistake has happened at a particular point so it is a very difficult for us to identify if it is too clumsy a simple example is assume that uh, there is an electricity panel in which uh, whenever you open that panel it consisting of uh, too many wires uh, which was uh, interconnected to each other is it a, is it a easy task to identify if any problem occur in that uh, electricity panel no it is very difficult task to identify what where is the problem is the reason is the the wire or circuit in that panel box is too complex to understand so instead what you can do is why can't you go for uh, uh, arranging the sub boxes or sub panels in the by separating the complex uh, electricity panel into for, for, uh, di different different uh, sub panels and why can't you place a led for each sub panel so that uh, if the sub corresponding sub panel is failed then the led will not glow and uh, if the if it is working fine then the led will glow then it is easy for you to identify if any problem occurs in which sub panel or in which uh, box of the panel uh, panel box or electricity panel box uh, the problem occurred then immediately you go there and you will open the box and you will identify uh, or you will go through the circuit over there and you will identify what is the problem so it is an easy task that means whenever you go for a modularity then it is it will become a easy task for you to identify uh, any problem occurs then uh, the same concepts we can also apply for the computer networks so from starting from the data transmission to receiving they it will go the data the data or packets we can say in terms of packets they will go under many uh, routes so how can you identify uh, or how can you identify where the problem occurred so that is the reason in the process of data communication from the from the releasing from your web application or from your uh, application at your computer to till reaching of other computer or destination computer uh, the the process or the work which, which is happening are divided into seven layers or seven uh, subsections which are called seven layers of iso osi protocol stack iso means international standards organization osi means open system for interconnection so this iso osi was first introduced in 19 uh, 1979 then later in 19 in the mid of 1980s this tcp ip protocol stack has been developed so the uh, first uh, the iso osi model of the network protocol stack is the first reference model for the computer networks in which there are seven layers those are called uh, those are ranging from uh, physical layer data link layer network layer uh and uh, the session layer uh, sorry transport layer session layer present layer presentation layer and application layer like that seven layers are there 
इन द केस ऑफ टी सी पी प्रोटोकॉल स्टैक टी सी पी एक्स प्रोटोकॉल स्टैक द सेशन एंड प्रेजेंटेशन लेयर्स वेल एलिमिनेटेड ओनली द एप्लीकेशन लेयर ट्रांसपोर्ट लेयर नेटवर्क लेयर डेटा लिंक लेयर एंड फिजिकल लेयर द ओनली फाइव लेयर्स विल बी प्रेजेंट इन द टी सी पी आई पी प्रोटोकॉल स्टैक so the why this tcp ip has been uh, the, uh, why this for the tcp ip protocol stack have only two only five layers uh, as compared to the previous uh, iso osi layer it means uh, the tcp ip will not focus on the session management or presentation it only focus on reaching the data to the target that is uh, to the target application which is uh, present in the application layer so uh, that is the reason these two layers were eliminated so uh basically basically uh, this 1979 is in the sense uh, at the time the network is slowly growing uh, there is no much uh, internet uh, uh, kind of technology and uh, um, uh, networking kind of technology at that time it's slowly growing so whenever the advance of technology has happened uh, in 1980s uh, uh, the the researchers have faced a very serious problem that uh, uh whenever any communication loss has happened the packets are dropping simply like that so so it is a it is a gift to the computer network society uh, that is uh, uh, the invention of the tcp and ip so here tcp in the sense uh, it is a transmission control protocol which will guarantee the delivery of the packet so even though the packet was dropped or missed in the middle then Uh, the tcp will give you uh, the retransmission of the same packet uh, so that uh, finally uh, finally that uh, the packet will be reached at the destination and uh, the destination computer will assemble those packets where in case of ip uh, ip will decide that uh, to whom you are supposed to send the data so how you can say that uh, you are supposed to send the data only to the particular uh, particular system so obviously like uh, how a postman will deliver uh, the courier uh, by based upon the house number in the same way here also every computer in connected in the network either maybe in the internet or intranet will be having an address which is called internet protocol address which is called ip address so they based upon the by binding to the uh, ip address and uh, guaranteeing of the delivery and quality of service was maintained with the help of tcp so this tcp ip was combinedly form a protocol stack which is taking the proper which is taking the references from the iso osi model and they have developed a separate stack by eliminating the presentation and session layers of the iso osi protocol stack which is called as here tcp ip protocol stack so this a transmission control protocol or internet protocol uh, is a suite of many protocols for transmitting information from point to point uh, on a network so often it has called as a stack stack in the sense uh, uh, the the that means uh, the communication has to go from top to bottom and uh, at the receiving end uh, again from bottom to top uh, the communication has to go on so that is reason we will call it as a stack so this particular lecture i will explain about the open system interconnection model ip addressing and subnetting which are very important for us to understand when we are going for uh, designing the firewalls uh, firewall po policies uh, and uh, configuring the virtual private networks uh, and uh, uh, configuring the dmz uh, and writing the rules in the snort uh, ids uh, for all these things uh, this basic information is required so that is reason in this lecture i will focus on these three topics the iso osi model osi reference model divides the communication function used by two hosts into seven separate layers the tcp ip has its own stack of protocols that corresponds to these layers so the osi iso osi model of the protocol stack is like this the first layer is the physical layer where here the physical connectivity will be maintained so in the physical connectivity the rj45 jack or maybe the internet may be connected with the latest usb models or maybe with the switches so this kind of things will be available at the physical level which will mainly focus on the transmitting of the signals in a digital form when coming to the next layer called data link layer 
So here the data link layer, especially whenever the connectivity has happened, the next uh, the connectivity has happened with the you know, physically, the whatever the raw signals that are coming into the computer has to be has to be framed in a fixed format. Then that will be done with the help of the data link layer. So the data link layer is especially responsible for two main tasks. One task is the logical connection. Second, second task is for the uh, for the medium axis control. That means that means uh, whether whether uh, how you know that a computer is responding to the uh, incoming request. So that is uh, depending upon the medium axis control uh, that is present at the data link layer. That means medium means uh, you are supposed to connect to uh, you are supposed to uh, speak with a computer via a particular medium. Okay. Here medium is nothing but here it is not an English medium or Hindi medium or any other medium. Here medium in the sense the the mode of communication. Okay, the mode of communication uh, will be uh, will be called, which is also called as a network interface card on in the computer. So every network interface card will be consisting of uh, a address which is called as physical address. Okay, which is called as physical address. This physical address will be imprinted on the network interface card at the time of manufacturing. So this uh, this network interface card address need to be looked up by the uh, the physical layer devices such as switches or uh, switches or uh, switches especially. They will whenever any uh, any device is connected with the switches automatically uh, that uh, that switch will ask for what is the uh, what is the physical address of the computer which is connected? So the the computer will respond with the physical address so that uh, the switch will record the physical address of the computer. Okay, the so the switch will be having the physical address of the computer so that uh, any other outgo uh, any other incoming packet uh, consisting of the IP address uh, uh, corresponding to whom that uh, a packet has to be sent. Uh, then whenever it is received by the switch. Uh, the switch will ask the computers which are connected to that switch who is having this particular IP address. Then the one who are having the IP address uh, of the uh, required IP address will send the reply with the, its IP address and also the physical address. The physical address is also called as MAC address. This is called medium access control address. So both the addresses will be sent to the Switch. Then the switch will record. Okay, this is the physical address of the computer, and it is a corresponding uh, corresponding IP address. So here, IP address is said to be the logical address, and the network interface card address is said to be the physical address. So for corresponding this IP address, this is the physical address. Then, then obviously this uh, uh, packet, whatever the packet has to be transmitted, that will be transmitted to the corresponding physical address. So thereby. Uh, thereby, the physical address means it is, a, it is clearly visible there. So, whenever that computer receives it, then then the particular packet will be escalated to the upper layers of the uh, corresponding computer. So, what are the upper layers here? The upper layers are network layer. Next, next to the data link layer is network layer. So, here network layer consisting of IP addressing, ICMP, IGMP, ARP, RIP, and OSPF. These are the various protocols available in network. But frankly, uh, frankly speaking, uh, here uh, this uh, IP address, sorry, this networking layer or network layer can be further divided here. Uh, this uh, the protocols which are available in this network layer, such as uh, IP, ICMP, IGMP. Instead, uh, among these protocols, the protocol such as ARP, which is called uh, address resolution protocol. This ARP can be shifted down to the lower level that is to the data link layer where, where the logical link layer consisting of these two protocols that has uh, two protocols such as ARP and RARP which are called address resolution protocol and reverse address resolution protocol. So the data link layer can be split into two categories. One is medium access control a MAC layer uh, MAC sublayer and the logical link layer. MAC sublayer is totally focused on the controlling of the medium 
our connectivity our mode of connection with other computers uh, or uh, with the switches and other physical devices where in case of logical link control uh, ll layer will mainly focus on the resolving of the address what is the resolving of the address whenever the switch has forwarded the packet to the computer of corresponding physical address obviously that physical address must be mapped to the ip address that is logical address then only this packet can be sent to the upper direction so whenever any computer receives a packet at the mac level the after the mac level in the data link layer the another sub layer is called the logical link layer in that logical link layer this address resolution protocol will be there what this address resolution protocol will do is the whatever the packet received okay what are the packet received at the data link layer will be will be having the physical uh, address so this arp protocol will look for whether this is intended to the same physical address or not once the physical address is matched then this particular physical address will be mapped to the corresponding ip address so so then only this packet can be go up this can this packet can go up from the data link layer to the upper layers such as network layer okay so this network layer whenever it receives at the network layer then the rest of the processing of the packet will happen so that is the reason uh, please remember the data link layer address is to be the physical address which is always uh, constant you cannot change that address where in case of the upper layer which is called ip address which is a logical address this logical address can be changed whenever you want to uh, change the uh, address that means uh, you may use a dhcp to change this address or you may physically change this address and configure via software so that is the reason it is said to be logical address and where in case of data link layer address is said to be physical address the physical address cannot be changed because uh, at the time of manufacturing of the network interface card the address is imprinted the address is imprinted on that so you cannot change it okay anyhow uh, with the help of some mac changer software and all you can do for some time but you cannot uh, you cannot uh, originally change the uh, data link layer uh, sorry that is physical address of a network interface card after this uh, after this network layer then we'll move on to the uh, uh, top layer which is called transport layer so any any protocol which is at the upper layer must depend upon either either of the tcp or udp services at the transport layer so so that uh, as we have seen previously that tcp communication will maintain uh, the point to point communication and also maintains the quality of service by performing the guaranteed delivery where in case of udp this is not the case udp never concern about the connection, uh, connection. and it it won't connect, it won't uh, concern about the whether the packet has been delivered to the destination or not so whenever the uh, whenever you want quality of service and uh, uh, the guaranteed delivery you are supposed to use the tcp connectivity where in case of udp whenever this uh, this uh, guaranteed delivery can be uh, can be neglected or can be uh, can be uh, liberalized then in such places you are supposed to use the universal datagram protocol are called udp protocol okay where case of tcp is to be transmission control protocol so these are the two differences so either from the up lower levels or from the upper levels this transport level protocols uh, the tcp and udp only the tcp and udp any service from the upper layer or from the down lower layer if they want to communicate from each other this transport layer is a major layer Uh, that means either they have to use either tcp version or udp version so that is the reason uh, in computer networks majority of the attacks are focused on exploiting the tcp or udp okay so exploiting the tcp or udp so in the next lectures we are going to see the how or in what possible ways this tcp udp and network layer protocols and other application layer protocols can be exploited by the attackers if they are exploited then what are the what are the traffic patterns that we can observe so that we can detect that this corresponding address or this corresponding attack as is going to be launched by the attacker
that is the very very uh, key aspect that is required for us to learn the reason is whenever you know the network pattern then only you can write a perfect policy for the firewall you can write a perfect uh, uh, configuration for the virtual private network you can also write a perfect rule in case of intrusion detection systems especially pertaining to this not ids so this is a transport and then once the transport is the uh, layer has been passed through then it will go to the session layer the session layer especially focus on the user session uh, and the presentation layer focus on the presentation of the uh, application then the major application will come into the picture so here session and presentation can be ignored in the tcp ip protocol stack but it can be included in the iso osi protocol stack so the application layer where you will find the http services domain name services dhcp services at the application level so uh, uh, so whenever data data is going to be transmitted from the source to destination the data will be will not be transmitted at once however this data will be divided into small chunks and all these uh, chunks uh, will be included into the packets uh, and every packet will be labeled with a sequence number and the sender will send these packets at the receiving end uh, the packets may be received at any order but uh, finally whenever it reaches the transport layer and if you use the tcp protocol all these uh, packets will be assembled at the uh, at the receiving end based upon the sequence number that you attach to the packet it is just like uh, if you you are going to shift house from one place to other place and you have called upon the uh, you have called the uh, the pa packet and mover services so what they will do is they will pack everything and they will label it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that so finally they will make note of uh, uh, make note in the document that uh, uh that we are going to we are we have packed around 50 items and all are labeled like this and your signature will be there and his signature will be there then that particular packets will be sent to the uh, uh, to the transportation and at the receiving end again the packets may be there is no rule that in how in what way these packets were uh, uh, uploaded uh, in the same way the packets will be downloaded at the receiving end so the packets may be downloaded in any order but finally whenever they set up in the destination end uh, they will they have to communicate that all the packets have been received so whatever the document you have signed at the sending end the same document he will carry at the receiving end and will show you that uh, these these are the number of packets that you have uploaded from there and these are the packets that you have delivered at this particular time so when both the things are matched then you will say that okay all our items are received otherwise what you say that uh, that so, so and so particular packet has been missed so what you are supposed to do is either you may sue there or you may uh, go for compensation there but in case of computer networks it will not be like that whenever you use a tcp protocol so if any packet was missed then what will happen is it will go for retransmission that means it will ask for the retransmission of the missed packet so whenever it asks for the retransmission of the missed packet the sender has to send the same packet again you may surprise that the sender how the sender can send the same packet again the sender whenever uh, whenever a sender sends a packet since the packet is of a software or a piece of uh, uh, piece of uh, software kind of thing uh, or we can say it is a signal kind of thing so it will take a backup of the packet first and the packet original packet will be sent so whenever uh, whenever the packet is missed then what it will do is it will create another copy of the same packet and will be forwarded further uh, will be sent again uh, if the if the missing of uh, if the missing request come from the receiver it is just like uh, whenever you apply for any uh, for, uh, any uh, examination or something whenever you fill any form uh, if you might have sent to the send the form to the corresponding exam center or maybe university or maybe the organizing uh, agency uh, first what you do is you will take a photostat copy of that and you keep one photostat copy with you and the original will be sent okay so so that it will be helpful for you to show in future that okay i have already sent this and this is the acknowledgement and this is the 
this is the uh, receipt of uh, the courier that i have sent you okay so then only then only uh, then only uh, if if they want to send if they want you to ask again to send then the same copy you may take a photostat of it and you may send it so that thereby you can have you can reduce the burden of recreating the entire uh, form uh, and sending out so in the same way here also in computer networks uh, any sending computer will first first create a packet and will take the copy of that and the copy of the packet will be sent out whenever the receiving system uh, uh, receiving system claims that the so and so packet has not been received then the sending system what it will do is it will take the copy of the same packet or it will create the copy of the same packet and will send out so this is the way uh, the retransmission will takes place from the uh, sending end and uh, requesting for the retransmission will be done at the receiving end whenever the packets were missed so these are the concepts that can be attested to the tcp protocol but in case of udp protocol udp is least bother about whether the packet missed or reached or any other thing so this uh, taking a copy of a packet and sending to the receiver and uh, maintaining the maintaining the uh, maintaining the record of the number of packets hand sent and maintaining a copy of each packet at the sending end and uh, uh, checking for the uh, rearrangement at the receiving end is also is a costly effort that require lot of resources so uh, it is, it may be suitable for the wired network because all the wired networks are attached with to the power sockets etc uh, but this cannot be used for the wireless networks because most of the wireless devices will operate on the battery so many of the wireless protocols will use the udp as a service but not the tcp as a service so that is reason even though you have a call drop or if you have a um, you, you have a uh, what's called packet drop you will not get the same packet again but if more number of retransmission takes place obviously your device wireless device processor has to work more whenever it works more the battery will be drain very fast so that is reason tcp is not a good service for the to use with the wireless networks where in case of wireless networks udp will be used in a popular way in case of uh, wired networks uh, tcp is a promising technology that can be used to guarantee the delivery of service so the tcp ip uh, protocol sub protocols uh, are services that supports the number of uh, network functions uh, such as hypertext transfer protocol dns uh, dhcp ftp snmp telnet uh, imap uh, smtp pop protocol so we have seen at the at the application level uh, so these are the protocols that are supported and sub protocols that are supported for the uh, in the tcp ip protocol stack yeah. so the iso osi model that we have seen so far uh, deals with the layers in the computer networks so the one beautiful part uh, in uh, the computer networks and security and uh, the tools which are related to the networking and security is uh, for everything there will be a uh, cheat sheet is available cheat sheet in the sense uh, you can quickly go through that and you can recall uh, what is the content of uh, a particular uh, Um, particular method or uh, uh, particular subject or something so here uh, this uh, material uh, you can find it from the internet also the same thing whatever i find on the internet uh, that i am presenting here so here what is iso osi model osi model means uh, open system interconnection is a standardized reference framework for conceptualizing the data communication between the networks so here this is the apst ndp so like that you may remember so ap means uh, ap st ndp that means uh, a means application layer p for presentation layer s for session layer uh, t for the transport layer and n for network layer and d for data link layer p for physical layer so what actually it is uh, this application layer this application management uh, supplying network services to the applications are the responsibility of the application layer presentation layer is for the data representation and session is for the session management either it may be an application session or maybe user session transport layer for the e2e connection management that is end to end connection management 
transmission, segmentation, error recovery, etc. While coming to the network uh, uh, network management, uh, that is a uh, logical addressing uh, and routing. In previously, we have seen the logical addressing, that is uh, the IP address. Data link layer, which is the physical addressing and uh, switching concepts, uh, that will come under the data link layer. In the physical layer, the physical standards, the physical medium standards, like connecting the connectors, cables, radio devices, this kind of things will come under the physical layer. So, and whatever the whatever the content that will come from the top top uh, top layer to the bottom layer, all these uh, uh, contents uh, will be endorsed by each layer while go while going down the uh, layer or while going down the stack which is also called as encapsulation. That means uh, uh, whenever the data is coming from the application layer to presentation layer, before moving to the presentation layer, application will layer will make a stamp, uh, that means will make a, uh, will make a, it's a presence with the data link layer. So application layer headers will be added with the data link, sorry, application layers headers will be added with the data and will be sent to the presentation layer. There again, presentation layer header will be added to the content that is received from the application layer and will be forwarded to the next session, next layer. Now in the session layer, session layer headers will be added to the content that is received from the presentation layer. Like that, uh, every layer, its own headers will be added and finally, finally while coming down the uh, data link layer, finally here data link layer will add its data link headers and uh, will send for, uh, will forward the uh, data to the lower levels. This is called encapsulation. So that is what we called preparing and passing the data by uh, any upper layer to the lower level, uh, le lower layer below it uh, is also called as encapsulation. Means uh, going from the application layer all the way down to the physical layer. But at the receiving end, whenever the data, uh, whatever the data is there, which is received at the receiving end, uh, has to go through the upper layers. So whenever it is going to the upper layers, each header will be removed and finally at the application layer only the original data what is sent will be available here. So this is what the this is what the decapsulation means. So it is just like um, uh, you, might of, you might have seen the launching of a rocket, uh, rocket uh, where uh, some satellite will be placed in that rocket and will be sent. So there will be a level of uh, there will be stages of, uh, of uh, ignition will be there. First stage, second stage, third stage and all. As it is, as the rocket is moving forward, the, these, stages, uh, these stages will go out, uh, will be removed uh, from the rocket. Uh, finally, the satellite will be placed in the uh, space. So this, uh, this is, just you recall the same uh, concept here. Whenever the application data has to be uh, sent to the upper layers, uh, and if the content is received at the lower level, then the physical layer, what it will do is, it will remove its physical layer header. Then the data, then the content will be forwarded to the data link layer. In the data link layer, data link headers will be removed. Then in the network layer, network headers will be removed. Transport layer, transport headers will be removed. Finally, the original content will be received by received at the application. So this way of uh, uh, this way of including of the headers and removing of the headers is said to be encapsulation and decapsulation. So here are the protocols that are available at each and every layer. In application layer, already we have seen DNS, DHCP, FTP, PDU, Telnet, POP3, IMAP protocols. These are the things will come under the uh, application layer. So in case of presentation layer, ASCII character set, uh, Unicode, uh, JPEG, GIF, SSL, TLS uh, will be available at the presentation layer. At the session layer, uh, uh, SIP, uh, PPTP, point to point uh, terminal protocol, this kind of things will be available in the session layer. Transport, transport layer, TCP and UDP. So majority of uh, the upper layers and lower layers will depending upon TCP and UDP. So network layer, again, uh, here IPv4, IPv6, uh, um, optimal shortest path first, uh, these are the things will come under the network layer. While coming to the data link layer, Ethernet, frame relay, point to point communication, these are things will come under the data link layer. In the physical layer, Wi-Fi, USB, Bluetooth, RJ45 jack, uh, these are the things will come under the physical layer. And while coming to this uh, transport layer ports, uh, here as uh, a port in the sense, uh, any service and the application layer will bind to a port and has to run. So these ports are uh, divided into two categories. One is user-defined ports and another is uh, uh, predefined ports. 
So user defined ports uh, is nothing but uh, here category well known ports uh, 0 to 1023 are the use, uh, predefined ports or we can say that system reserved ports used by system processes. Okay, this, this pro, these ports should not be used for any other application purpose. Next, registered post 1024 to 49,151 for specific services ports like 8080. You want to run HTTP service, then you can write a HTTP server and you can run with the 8080 port. That is up to you. Uh, you can decide which port you want to bind your application. Next is private ports. Uh, for the private purposes, you cannot use this uh, private ports like 49,152 to 65,535. So if you, if any computer wants to communicate with any other computer, then obviously it has to uh, communicate via socket communication. Socket in the sense socket is equal to the IP address plus port number is equal to socket. So if you look at here, important ports for the transport layer is like this. These are the general ports. Uh, uh, as a as a networking and security person, you must remember at least uh, these these ports. Uh, like uh, 20 is the TCP protocol for the FTP, and uh, 21 is for the FTP control, and 22 is for the SSH, 23 is for the Telnet, 25 is for SMTP, 53 is for the DNS, uh, 67 and 68 for the DHCP, 69 is for the TFTP. TVFTP means a trivial file transfer protocol which is a somewhat secured for FTP compared to the normal FTP. Uh, 80 is the HTTP, 110 is the POP3 post office protocol, uh, which is for the mail server, 161 for SNMP simple network management protocol, 443 for the secure socket layer, and 16, uh, 16, 384 to 32, uh, 16,000, sorry, 16,384 to 32,767 are the RTP or VOIP based protocols. So, at least this, at least this much, uh, this much information you should remember. Uh, then only it will be easy for us to track, trace out the traffic, uh, or network traffic, uh, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, write policies, uh, rules uh, for the intrusion detection systems. Next one is uh, uh, the uh, PDUs in o OSI model. Uh, here PDUs in the sense uh, how this particular data will be represented. Uh, usually, uh, I'm calling it as in general, uh, it is as a data, but uh, actually it is not data, it is not said to be data actually. But at every layer, at every layer, its its, uh, uh, its notation will change. For example, at the physical layer, uh, whatever the content I am calling it as, uh, it will be represented in terms of bits. So here the stream of bits will come into the physical, uh, will be represented at the physical level. Whenever the stream of bits are coming into the system, this stream of bits are uh, uh, leveled uh, into uh, into a structured format uh, which are called as frames uh, in the case uh, that are uh, handled by the data link layer whenever these frames are taken then these frames uh, he, in these frames uh, the data link headers will be removed and whatever the payload will be there that will be sent uh, up uh, in the uh, to the network level whatever the content that you sent up uh, is said to be packet that means here the notation of the content that we will receive is set to be packet. So whenever this packet is received, then the network headers will be removed from this packet and the content will be forwarded to the next level, where the content is set to be segment here. That means the segment is one which is the one which is without the network headers, data link headers, and physical headers. So these segments will be will be sent once it is processed. Then it will be sent to the upper layers. Uh, either it may be a data type, it may be data or the pure data that you want to receive at the application level. So at the physical level, it is said to be the content is said to be uh, uh, is said to be the bits, uh, and the data link level it is said to be frame. Network layer it is said to be packet, and transport layer it is said to be segment, and application layer it is said to be data. So that is the reason we cannot use data at all time. Uh, if this uh, this should be used only with respect to the uh, layer that you are going to present or layer that you are going to refer. So this is what is called uh, data units uh, representation uh, at uh, every layer. So here we will call uh, layer 1 to 4 as the lower layers and uh, 5, 6 and 7 are set to be uh, from top to down if you look at it. Uh, from 1 to 4 are set to be the upper layers here application presentation session and transport layer 
and uh, uh, 5 to 7 are said to be the lower layers okay 5 6 7 are said to be the lower layers here because uh, uh, because whatever the network device that uh, that you look at uh, all these network devices uh, will represent uh, up to the network layer for example uh, the repetitors uh, are uh, are the hubs this kind of uh, hardware devices uh, will be will be looking after the physical layer while com while, while coming to the switches okay in the networking switches uh, will be will be taking care of the physical and the data link layer while coming to the routers routers will focus on the physical data link and network layers okay while coming to the gateway gateway will take care of all the layers so these are the terminologies that you must remember that means uh, at what level of secure at what level you want to provide security that means at what device level you want to provide security so uh, uh, repetitors hubs uh, hub will focus on the physical layer switches will focus on the uh, data link layer routers will take care of the physical data link and network layer while coming to the gateways gateway is nothing but uh, it may be a server which will which will manage all the physical layer to the application layer okay so this is the way you are supposed to remember and uh, to to remember this uh, uh, layers easily uh, some notation was given here all people seems to know need uh, seems, seems to need data processing so apst ndp so application presentation session transport network data link and uh, physical layer so devices at each layer so what are the devices that will be uh, that will be fixed at the each level i just uh, as i told you now the physical layer hubs repetitors modems these are the physical layers while coming to the data link layer switches bridges are that the data link layer while coming to the network uh, routers and in case of transport layer firewalls application presentation session layer firewalls will be placed or ids will be placed so this is the uh, this is the cheat sheet we can say um, and uh, like this uh, you will find many number of many sheets uh, cheat sheets uh, to uh, easily understand the content uh, and uh, quickly for quick reference so here it is a ccna cisco certified network administrator cheat sheet uh, where it is going to give provide you the details about uh, each and every uh, layer so uh, this uh, this here uh, du pdu is nothing but protocol data unit so that means uh, 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 that is the data unit with respect to the protocol network protocol stack uh, what we will call it as so they have given the uh, description uh, of each and everything and uh, each and every protocol or uh, and each and every layer and uh, at every layer what are the protocols available and its description was given here anyhow they we have seen uh, in this table in this table we have seen the protocols uh, protocols on which the uh, which which are binded to which port and how uh, what are the what are the services which are binded to which port and uh, uh, its significance we have seen in the uh, this particular table so like that uh, you can refer to this uh, cheat sheet i will provide in the google classroom and you may refer to this and also you may also download it from the internet also uh, so this is what the uh, uh, brief description of the uh, TCP IP protocol stack and ISO OSI protocol stack. Uh, this much uh, information is enough uh, for as an introductory one, so that uh, we can move forward to the IP address and IP address selections and all. So we'll move on to the IP address and subnetting concept. Uh, 